yet another question that wants the main idea of the text, and these answer choices are much longer, so maybe a dumb summary won't be enough here, but it's not going to stop me. I'm going to try to just come up with the dumbest version, and then when I need to sort through the choices, if I need more complex ideas, the choices will tell me what those complex ideas are. So let's just simply go to the passage, see what we can get out of it. Believing that living in an impractical space Believing that living in an impractical space can heighten awareness and even improve health, conceptual artists Madeline Jins and Shusaku Arakawa designed an apartment building in Japan to be more fanciful than functional. Okay, more fanciful than functional, right? So impractical can be good. That's what I'm getting there. A kitchen counter is chest high on one side and knee high on the other. A ceiling has a door to nowhere. The effect is disorienting but invigorating disorienting but invigorating. These are strong words. After four years there, filmmaker Nobu Yamakao reported significant health benefits. So this place is weird, weird, but good. That's my dumb summary, okay? Is it going to be enough to get the whole thing? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. All right, choice A. Although inhabiting a home surrounded by fanciful features such as those designed by these people can be rejuvenating, it is unsustainable. Well, that's negative, right? But look, this is definitely a positive summary that we have. So no, that's that's got to be wrong. Designing disorienting spaces like those in these people's building is the most effective way to create a physically stimulating environment. Well, that's certainly positive, right? Physically stimulating. But that has a very dangerous word. And I see this word all the time in wrong answer choices. The most effective way right? Ooh, we're blurry. There we go. So it's the most effective way. Well, it, it could be an effective way, right? That, that seems to be what they're saying. It is an effective way. It does seem to have benefits. But to say it is the most effective is a huge step in the wrong direction, right? That is way too far. We do not get into a comparison of all the different types of ways of designing a house. So we are not allowed to make this big sweeping claim. So this is wrong. And it's wrong for a reason that is very, very common. I talk a lot about strong words. That's definitely going on here. But to be even more specific, we have to worry about words that start to kind of like quantify things, right? The most means, you know, the, the top, the number one, right? Or uh, another way to put it is extremes. These are bad things. They, they are not always wrong, but they need to be justified and almost never are they actually justified by the lines. So you got to be careful of that. Uh, C, as a filmmaker, this person has long supported the designs of conceptual artists. Well, it doesn't say that. Long supported is very similar, right? It's trying to quantify and say that there's some extreme here, right? It's this very similar reasoning as to why this is going to be wrong. We don't know how long this person has supported this. It's just she's, he or she is just one example in this paragraph of someone who's got this house, this type of house. So I don't know how long that they've supported it. it I don't. I don't know anything about them other than they live in this house and say it's pretty good. So that seems wrong too. It's probably D. Let's make sure. Although impractical, the design of the apartment building by these people may improve the well-being of the building's residents. So it's positive. It says it's impractical, though. So that's kind of a uh, something that started off the whole passage. That's good. And then um, it also has a nicer word, right? If we were just kind of comparing the word may compared to the word most, right? That's a big difference. If something is the most effective, it is the number one single best way to do something. If it may improve something, it may or it may not, right? There's wiggle room in that word. And so those are the kinds of choices that we like. Again, it's not the case that most is always wrong and may is always right, but these are, these, there definitely are odds stacked against the word most and in favor of the word may. So you'll see as you practice, these kinds of patterns uh, tend to appear in lots of different questions. And you want to train your brain to notice those words the same way that I did, right? As soon as I read them, I was like, oh, that's a problem word, or at least that's a word I have to think about. You're not used to that, but it's an important part of the SAT so that you can sort through these long answer choices very quickly, especially too, because these are words that you might not notice in your daily life. We, we, we tend to ignore these as kind of connector words, and we don't think about them as conveying much meaning, but on the SAT, they could absolutely be the difference between right and wrong.